Hello everyone, here I will discuss about the gross features of kidney. In this section, I will be explaining the location, its external features, relations, renal fascia, its uh, macroscopic structure and applied anatomy. Coming to this urinary system, what you are seeing this is the posterior abdominal wall, okay, with some muscles, posterior abdominal wall muscles there. In the medial, there is this is the inferior vena cava. Here, this is the abdominal iota. Then, each sides of this vertebral, vertebral bodies, they will get the right. Here, this is the left kidney. Here comes this ureter, which opens into this urinary bladder. Then, urethra comes. So, this urinary system or the renal system includes this uh, kidney ureter, urinary bladder and urethra. Its function is to filter blood and uh, excretes waste products from the blood. This, what you are seeing, this is the regions of this uh, abdomen. You will see the kidney in detail coming to its location. Here you can see two transverse planes, that is the transpyloric plane and transtubercular plane. And two vertical planes, that is the right and left lateral planes. This transpyloric plane is passes through this uh, lower of this L1 vertebrae. Transtubercular plane passes through this upper of this L5 vertebrae. Then right and left lateral planes is passed through this mid clavicular points, right and left each sides. By means of these planes, the abdomen gets divided into nine regions. Here, this is the umbilicus we will get. So, this is the umbilical region. Above this, this is the epigastrium. Each sides of the epigastrium, this is the right and left hypochondrium. Each sides of this umbilicus, there is the uh, right and left lumbar regions. So, this purple structure that is the kidney is a bean shaped uh, organ. So, it situates in relates to this umbilicus, epigastrium, hypochondrium and the lumbar regions of the respective sites. Then in this figure also what you are seeing this is the posterior abdominal wall. See this is the abdominal cavity, this is the diaphragm. See here medially in front of this vertebra there is inferior vena cavae, this is the abdominal iota. See, this is the right kidney. See here, this is the left kidney. Okay. Here, in posteriorly, there is the muscles there. This one is the psoas major, medial most. Lateral to that, we will get this is the quadratus lumborum. This muscle here, this is the transversus abdominis. Kidney lies over the fascia of this muscles. Psoas major, quadratus lumborum and the transversus abdominis. And also, see this is the right kidney is slightly lower than the left due to this here right side liver. Then coming to the closer view of this kidneys, here its uh, features. See this is the median, this is the inferior vena cava, this one is the abdominal iota. See this is the upper pole. Of the kidney which relates to this uh, this yellow structure that is the suprarenal or adrenal gland it is endocrine gland this is the lower pole this is the lower pole this is the upper pole this border this is the lateral border that is the lateral border see here medial toes this is the medial border that is the medial uh, medial border see what surface you are seeing here this is the anterior surface okay faces anteriorly opposite then back they will get the posterior surface then this figure can see clearly so here this is the anterior view this is the posterior view okay here this is the inferior vena cava this one is the abdominal iota see this is the right kidney this is the left kidney this is the upper pole, this is the lower pole, this is the lateral border, see this is the medial border. Okay, The surface here, this is the anterior surface. So this is the second image that is the posterior view. So the surface, this is the posterior surface. Okay, See this is the right kidney, it is the reverse of the first image. 
the right kidney, this is the inferior vena cavae, this one is the abdominal aorta. Okay. Then, more than that, see the medial border. See here, this is the medial border. Okay. So, it is also called this the hilum, hilum of the kidney. Okay. In the medially where some structures is entering and leaves from this kidney that part forms the hilum so this part is also called the hilum of the kidney where you can see the renal veins there see the inferior vena cavae so this the renal veins is coming from this kidney and drains into this inferior vena cavae then deep to that or this posterior to that here this is the abdominal iota see this the renal artery is going deep to this behind this renal vein so anteriorly will get the renal vein then posterior to that will get the renal artery then posterior most will get this renal pelvis so this is the ureter the upper expanded part of this ureter that forms the renal pelvis okay so, structures of the hilum, okay, from anterior to posterior, there is the renal vein, then we will get, this is the, this is the renal artery, then we will get the renal pelvis. By means of this arrangement, we can identify the side of the kidney, which is right and which is left. See, this is the right side, this anterior surface is uh, irregular. The, uh, this uh, posterior surface of both kidneys, right and left, the posterior surface is flat. Okay, anterior surface is somewhat irregular. And the medial, this is the medial border, where the structures entering and leaving the kidney through a particular region that is called the hilum. The arrangement of structures in the hilum from anterior to posterior is the anterior most that is the renal vein then uh, renal artery and the renal pelvis okay with the help of this we can identify the side of the kidney see the posterior view see the posterior most we can see this is the ureter okay this is the ureter comes towards this it goes towards this uh, lower pole lower pole of the kidney then coming to the relations of the kidney here in this figure focus on this first image here the, here you can see this is the inferior vena cavae here part of this abdominal iota is there see this is the right kidney this one part of this left kidney you can see here this the spleen is there in the left see this stomach it's cut Okay, it goes like this stomach then this is the duodenum second part you can see it relates to this uh, uh, right kidney this is the duodenum then here it continues here this is the jejunum then here this is the colon ascending this is the transverse colon here we will get this is the hepatic flexure in relates to the right kidney see this is the transverse colon see here we'll get the splenic fracture in relates to this left kidney okay in the middle here also behind the stomach here this is the pancreas it's going over this and the surface of the kidney to this uh, spleen okay then coming to this anterior relations of this right and left kidney here this is the right side see this is the medial this is the this part see this is the hilum okay where you can see this is the anterior to posterior this is the renal vein behind this there is the renal artery then see here this is the renal pelvis okay renal vein renal artery this is the renal pelvis continues here this is also ureter so on the right side this medial most okay there is the duodenal area to the second part of this duodenum 
see the upper pole on both sides relates to the suprarenal gland then here this is the hepatic area that is relates to this liver the orange shaded area see this pink area that is the colic area relates to this uh, hepatic flexure of the colon then here duodenum behind below this will get the jejunum small part to the lower pole see in this left kidney upper pole same relation that is the suprarenal then there is the relation of the stomach that is the gastric area then lateral upper there is the splenic area then medial middle there is the pancreas relates to the pancreas then here we'll get this is the lower pole medial there is the jejunum lateral we'll get the lower pole that is the colic area that is the splenic flexure of the colon splenic flexure of the colon so this forms the anti relations of the right and left kidney see again we'll see this uh, well again we'll see this image okay see here this is the right kidney see the part of this uh, left kidney here you can see the spleen here this is the stomach there deep to the stomach behind the stomach this is a pancreas on this left side see this is uh, this one is the splenic flexure towards this left side see the right this is the duodenum comes this is the second part of the duodenum then here we'll get this uh, is the liver then see the suprarenal gland or this upper pole then here this is the hepatic flexure to the lower aspect this is the transverse colon this is the hepatic flexure so that's about the anti relations then coming to the posterior relations okay so this is the back okay so view from behind so you can see here this is the vertebrae this is the 11th 11th rib okay this is the 12th rib relates to the uh, t12 vertebrae see here you can see the kidney in the uh, right side this is the lower aspect of the right kidney here it relates to this l3 vertebrae t12 l1 l2 l3 okay so posteriorly this right is relates to this uh, 12th right is slightly lower relates to the 12th rib in the left it's relates to see the outline of the left kidney is relates to the 11th and 12th rib here we'll get this part of this diaphragm is also there diaphragm then posteriorly this posterior abdominal wall muscles here this is the psoas major muscle see the psoas major okay then over that we'll get this is the quadratus lumborum this is the quadratus lumborum so posterior most there is the quadratus lumborum then medial and the posterior there is the psoas major then here also you can see this is the part of this uh, transversus abdominis muscle with aponeurosis okay this here will get the transversus abdominis muscle additional to that posteriorly here you can see two nerves are there this is the ilio inguinal now see here this is the ilio inguinal now and this one is the ilio hypergastric okay so this is the ilio inguinal see if above there is the ilio hypergastric lower one is the ilio inguinal nerves so that forms the posterior relations okay here this is the schematic view posteriorly okay see this is the right this is the left view from behind so this is the upper it relates to this diaphragm in right there is the 12th rib this is the left upper that is the relates to the diaphragm and there is the 11th and the 12th ribs so medial most to that muscle that is the psoas major lateral to that will get the quadratus lumborum lateral most will get this transversus abdominis along with two nerves there but is the ilio hypergastric and this is the ilio inguinal nerves so that forms the posterior relations of both right and left 
kidneys. Only in the left kidney there is an addition of this 11th rib. Remaining relations there is same. Then coming to the coverings of the kidney. Okay. This one protects this uh, kidney. Here. Here what are you seeing this figure? This is the transverse section. This is the transverse section to the level of the kidney. See here, this is the vertebrae. This is the vertebrae that is the posteriorly placed forcefully. So this part, this is the anterior aspect. This is the posterior aspect, each sides. So this is the so this is the right kidney. This one is the this is the left kidney. Okay. Then this uh, kidney is inner, inner to outer the coverings. Okay. Innermost that is the green color structure that is the fibrous capsule. So kidney that is covered by a fibrous capsule. Okay. So it is separable from the kidney. Okay. In a healthy kidney, we can separate this uh, uh, fibrous uh, capsule. Okay. Then outside the fibrous capsule, there will get this one is the perirenal fat. Okay. That yellow color structure that forms the this yellow structure that forms the perirenal fat. The perirenal fat is actually the brown fat. Okay, brown fat then it surrounds it fully surrounds the kidney this uh, perirenal fat okay fully surrounds this kidney then outer to the perirenal fat okay we can see this there is the renal fascia that renal fascia that is the red color structure you can see this yellow color outside will get the renal fascia this uh, it's the condensation of the extra peritoneal connective tissue this uh, renal fascia okay there is the this is the anterior lamina of this uh, renal fascia posteriorly there is forms the posterior lamina of the renal fascia you will see in detail the renal fascia then outside the renal fascia there will get the again there is a fatty layer that forms the pararenal fat that is not very clear in this outside the renal fascia will get the pararenal fat this is the white adipose tissue which helps to anchor the kidney towards this posterior abdominal wall this pararenal fat okay so that's about this uh, coverings of this kidney from inner to outer then in this figure you'll get a better idea here in the second image this is the transverse section okay here you can see this is the this is the posterior this is the vertebrae that it for posteriorly leads anteriorly there you can see this is the inferior vena cavae see this is the inferior vena cavae here this is the abdominal iota there okay here we'll get this here we'll get the right kidney right kidney also there so this is the uh, left kidney then this fibrous capsule uh, this perirenal fat is not short here okay uh, this is the uh, it's mentioned actually this is the true capsule that forms the fibrous capsule okay it's the first innermost covering of the kidney it's made up of uh, fibrous tissue then here you can see this is the green structure that is the renal fascia that is the third covering okay that is the renal fascia see this is towards anteriorly this is towards anteriorly this is towards posteriorly so this is the anterior lamina of this renal fascia here this forms the posterior lamina okay see this anterior lamina the anterior lamina is continuing okay towards the opposite side over this inferior vena cava and abdominal iota and meets with the anterior lamina of this uh, right kidney so this is the right meets with the anterior lamina see this is the posterior lamina see the posterior lamina it is thick okay it goes over this front of this vertebral bodies 
okay then it's joining with the posterior lamina of this uh, right kidney this anterior and posterior lamina fuses laterally here you can see this fuses laterally and merges with this fascia transversalis okay so this anterior lamina is so uh, thin and the posterior lamina is thick here you can see this is the anterior lamina of the renal fascia this one is the posterior lamina of the renal fascia which covers the corresponding anterior and posterior surface okay in anteriorly it goes over this uh, uh, this one this uh, inferior vena cava abdominal aorta and fuses with the anterior lamina of the opposite uh, kidney and then posteriorly this posterior lamina goes over this in front of this vertebral bodies again okay, fuses with the posterior lamina of the opposite side kidney two lamina of each sides anterior and posterior fuses laterally okay then addition to that in the first image what you're seeing this is the sagittal view so it's, this is the sagittal view this is the anterior aspect this is the posterior aspect okay see here you can see the rib Twelfth rib, rib posteriorly. Okay, so this is the anterior lamina. This is the anterior lamina. Okay, so this is the left kidney. This is the left kidney. So this is the anterior lamina. This one is the posterior lamina. See the upper. It fuses. Okay, it fuses. This both lamina fuses upper. Okay. Then splits to enclose the suprarenal gland. Here you can see the suprarenal gland. It fuses and splits to enclose the suprarenal gland. Then joins, then merges with this diaphragmatic fascia. Lower this anterior and posterior lamina uh, is going down over this uh, ureter and uh, merges with this extra peritoneal connective tissue this into this peritoneal cavity. So that's about this renal fascia. So this renal fascia, this uh, condensation of this extra peritoneal connective tissue forms this uh, renal fascia. So it has uh, in transverse sections, you can see this is the anterior and posterior lamina clearly in the transverse sections. This is the anterior lamina, this is the posterior lamina, fuses laterally, anterior goes in front of this uh, vessels. Okay, and uh, joins with this anterior of the opposite kidney. Then posterior uh, lamina covers over this posterior surface, goes in front of this vertebra, then mm, joins with this posterior of this opposite kidney. This is the lateral aspect. So in the upper, in the superior, this in the sagittal view, you can see the superior of this uh, renal and inferior of this renal fascia. Superiorly, two fuses and uh, then splits to enclose this uh, suprarenal gland, then fuses, then merges with this diaphragmatic fascia. And lower, it lost in this extra peritoneal region. Here also you can see this uh, coverings. This is the kidney, this is in the transverse sections from inner to outer see this is the kidney this is the tissue of this kidney brown this green color that is the fibrous capsule that is the fibrous capsule then here this is the perirenal fat perirenal fat then here again this outer to this green that forms the renal fascia then outermost this is the pararenal fat okay so these are the coverings of this kidney coming to this structure of the kidney macroscopic structure of the kidney here this the renal parenchyma consists of this outer cortex so this outer cortex this part is the inner medulla so this is the coronal view okay it takes a coronal section through this kidney okay so this is the upper pole this is the lower pole this part is the hilum this is this forms the lateral border okay see here this part is the outer the small region from here to here this is the cortex 
okay this region in the most region this is the medulla which consists of some conical structures these forms these conical masses are called the renal pyramids it has a base see this is the base towards uh, projects towards this cortex that forms the cortical arches that forms the cortical arches it's not labeled here that forms the cortical arches then this part is the pointed part this is the apex of the renal pyramids okay this forms the apex okay where it is labeled that is also not labeled okay then see here this is the ureter see the ureter okay this is the dilated part of the ureter that is called the renal pelvis okay it's endos entering into this uh, kidney this region this is called the renal sinus this part is called the renal sinus this it divides into two to three major calyx this main divisions here this uh, renal pelvis okay this uh, renal pelvis divides into two to three this main division that is the major calyx this major calyx is divides into small divisions here this forms the minor calyx that forms the minor calyx okay so these are the major calyx this forms the minor calyx then see this is the base of the renal pyramids this is the apex this apex is projects into this minor calyx okay then so here this is the cortex outer cortex then inner part this is the medulla this is the medulla which consists of conical masses those are called the renal pyramids pyramids has a base this part is the apex which projects into this minor calyx okay see in between this uh, pyramids there is a part of this cortex extends towards into the medulla this region that is called the renal columns that is called the renal columns so the renal pyramids with this cortical arches forms lobe of the kidney so this is one lobe okay so this forms the lobe of the kidney there are some 5 to 13 renal pyramids will be there okay that's about the some important macroscopic structure of the kidney see here here is also you can see the see this the upper pole this is the lower pole this one is the lateral border this is the medial border this region is the uh, hilum okay the space here this is called the renal sinus this is the renal sinus see here you can see the ureter is coming this part is the pelvis this is the pelvis it divides into these large divisions that is the this forms the major calyx see it one divides into small divisions here you can see here the small divisions these small divisions these forms the minor calyx okay so this uh, apex is projecting into this minor calyx then here this is the cortex this forms the cortical arches this one forms the renal columns the lobe is one pyramid with this cortex part of the cortex this forms the one lobe of the kidney then next is the blood supply so blood supply includes this arterial supply and this uh, venous drainage you see here this one is the abdominal aorta see from the abdominal aorta a renal artery is uh, coming it is entering into the kidney from here this is the renal veins are coming this is drains into this inferior vena cavae okay then coming to this arterial supply
here in this figure you can see clearly the arteries. So here you can see this is the renal artery, it's a branch from this abdominal aorta. See it is uh, dividing into anteriorly one, two, three, four divisions. That is the anteriorly four segmental arteries. See here this is the posterior division. That is posteriorly there is a posterior segmental artery. So renal artery has two divisions, anterior and posterior. This anteriorly you can see the segmental arteries. Okay, this is the first one towards the apical region. The second one, this is the andro superior region. This is the third one to the andro inferior region. This is the fourth one to the inferior region. Okay, these are the divisions from the anterior division of the renal artery. See here, you can see here, this is the this one. That is the posterior division of the renal artery that forms the posterior segmental artery. So, five segmental arteries totally. Then, see here, this is the cortex. This one, this part is the medulla. Okay, that is the pyramids, renal pyramids. Okay, so this region, this forms the renal columns. So, these segmental arteries from here, this one is dividing like this. See, the segmental arteries is dividing. This forms the lobar arteries. That forms the lobar arteries for each lobe. Then see each lobar arteries divides into interlobar arteries. Each sides of the pyramids. This forms the interlobar arteries. Okay. Then see this interlobar arteries is arching over this cortical arches and forms here this one. This is the arcuate artery. Okay, then is towards this cortex that is the interlobular arteries. Okay, then this interlobular arteries that we'll see in the next figure. See here. So this is the renal artery. Okay, so this interlobular arteries divides into this afferent arterioles. Okay, this interlobular arteries divides into this. This is, here you can see this is the afferent. See, this is the afferent arterioles. Okay, this one is entering into this uh, renal corpuscle. Okay, this one is entering into this renal corpuscle. That is the part of the nephron that I'll explain. Keep in mind, this is going into this uh, F renal corpuscles, forming this uh, glomerulus, okay, glomerular capillary network. From there, it comes out okay, as efferent arteriole. So, blood from the renal artery is flowing through these branches of the renal arteriole. Then, it enters into the renal corpuscle, see, as afferent arteriole. Then, exit as efferent arteriole. That's how the blood gets filtered. Okay, then there form there is a formation of the filtrate in the renal tubules is going through this renal tubules. See this efferent arteriole, okay, it's forming a peritubular capillary network. This is the vasa recta arteriole, vasa recta veniole. It forms a peritubular capillary network. From there, the interlobular veins comes. See here, there is the interlobular veins, okay. Then we'll move back to this uh, first image. See here. So here we'll get the interlobular veins along with this interlobular arteries. Then interlobular veins forms this arcuate veins. Then here we'll get the interlobar veins. See this is the interlobar veins. This interlobar veins unites to form this renal veins. See the renal veins drains into this inferior vena cavae. Okay. There is no such inter lobar and uh, segmental veins as we've seen in this uh, renal artery okay that's about this uh, blood supply okay that's how the blood gets filtered through the skidding then so coming to this uh, functions of the kidney 
here you can see these are the parts of this uh, nephron here you can see this the uh, parts of the nephron this includes this one that is the uh, renal corpuscle see this renal corpuscle there is the glomerulus and this uh, Bowman's capsule then renal tubules renal tubules includes this proximal convoluted tubule this is the proximal convoluted tubule this one is the loop of Henle this is the descending segment of the loop of Henle this one is the ascending segment of the loop of Henle this is the distal convoluted tubule then there is the collecting duct so in the cortex you can see the glomerulus proximal convoluted tubules distal convoluted tubules in the medulla we can see the thick thick uh, thin segments of this loop of Henle with the major parts of this collecting ducts and the papillary ducts then so there is the filtration of this uh, blood through this kidney and there is a formation of the filtrate okay in this uh, tubules so there is the filtrate is uh, going through this tubules meantime there is a reabsorption of some ions and the secretion of some uh, materials some molecules some materials into this uh, filtrate okay so there is in the reabsorption of this uh, sodium chloride this uh, bicarbonates then this uh, water in at the level of this proximal convoluted tubules okay then reabsorption of this uh, this one water at this loop of Henle, then reabsorption of this uh, sodium chloride at this uh, ascending limb of this loop of Henle, then reabsorption of sodium chloride, this one bicarbonates, then water at this distal convoluted tubule, then sodium chloride, this one uh, urea, and this water in this uh, collecting ducts. Okay, so reabsorption of this uh, ions from this uh, filtrate to the renal veins the peritubular network then it goes through the serenal vein and enters the blood okay meanwhile there is a secretion of this uh, secretion of the some drugs okay creatinine and here you can see the potassium and hydrogen ions into this tubules into this filtrate okay the secretion that is marked with this uh, green color here you can see the secretion of this molecules are marked with this green color reabsorption is marked with this pink color okay that means the uh, sodium and chloride plays a key role in regulating the blood pressure meanwhile this hydrogen and carbonate ions this uh, bicarbonate uh, are which maintains a key role in maintaining the acid base balance that maintains the pH of the blood. So that's about this uh, functions of the kidney. Here you can see this is the x-ray image of this intravenous pilogram so this intravenous uh, pilogram or IVP it's a type of x-ray that helps to see any blockage in the kidney due to some uh, this one kidney stones then uh, enlarged prostate tumor tumor in the kidney or ureter any scarring from the surgeries or urinary tract infections and all can see properly by means of this intravenous pilogram then this procedure is that a contrast material or this dye is injected into the arm through the IV then dye travels to the bloodstream to this kidney what you see here this is the this one is this is the minor calyx this forms the major calyx this uh, you can see this is the renal pelvis this is the ureter can see then it's going to this uh, bladder if there is no obstruction it goes to this dye will reaches the level of this bladder okay so this is a normal intravenous pilogram 
this is the normal intravenous sick here you can see this part is the renal pelvis this is the major calyx this forms the minor calyx see this is the ureter you can see this is the this is the bladder okay here you can see this is the hydronephrosis okay see this is the this is also this uh, method this is the ivp okay here you can see this is the hydronephrosis of this one that is the right ureter see there is a hook shape the ureter is hook shaped here and the dye is not going through the see here you can see this is the major callus minor callus ureter you can see here there is a block there it's a moderate block there in the, the level of this ureter so this uh, ivp is helpful to locate the exact level of blockage okay to locate the exact level of blockage and gives a proper treatment according to that okay. so here this is the left side this is the normal one see here in this uh, right side you can see there is the hydronephrosis hydronephrosis means there is the so if there is any block in this ureter the urine gets uh, there is the stasis of the urine okay and there is the dilation of this uh, renal pelvis this one major callus uh, minor callus due to this accumulation of this urine so that's about this hydronephrosis so that's all about this gross features of kidney hope you understood then we should know the kidney is uh, one of the longest its uh, location where it situates its relations which are the anterior and posterior relations of right and left kidney then its structure that is the macroscopic structure uh, when we take a this one that is a coronal view, coronal section what and all we are see then the coverings which are the coverings is fibrous and this one that is the fatty coverings then its blood supply this arterial and venous drainage then applied aspects thank you